We begin with breaking news here at home. A place that helps immigrants and refugees adjust to their new lives in America became the scene of a massacre today in the city of Binghamton, New York. Authorities say a gunman went into the American Civic Association building and started shooting. The targets included a room full of people, full of immigrants who were reportedly taking classes to prepare for their citizenship exams. Dozens of people barricaded themselves in the basement or in closets for safety until police were finally able to enter the building. They found the suspected gunman inside the building, apparently from a self-inflicted gunshot wound. Uh, he had killed himself with a self-inflicted gun uh, gunshot wound. Joining us now live from the scene in Binghamton, New York, is NBC's Ron Allen. Ron, thank you very much for making time to talk with us. What can you tell us about the latest news? Well, the, the latest is that the authorities have searched the gunman's home, which is not far from here in Johnson City. Uh, they've taken a computer hard drive, a, a rifle case, some small suitcases, other things. There are also reports that they have confirmed the, uh, they found a pistol license that he had uh, that has the same serial mark as two handguns that were found at the scene. Uh, the gunman apparently had handguns, although there were reports that he had a rifle earlier. The death toll we know stands at, a, at, at 14, including him. Uh, the last I heard, there were still four people in critical condition at the hospital. All this began at 10.30 in the morning or so when he burst into the Civic Center, encountered the two receptionists who were sitting there, and shot, one, shot both of them. Uh, the police chief, uh, we have some sound, who can pick up the story from there about what she did. What she did is she uh, pretended she was dead. After he shot her, she went down to the ground. He went into a room off that reception area, shot several people. And as he exited, he went down the hallway in the building. Uh, she crawled underneath the desk. And she, sometime after that, she called us. Now, what the authorities don't know is how long the gunman was in the building before all that happened. The 911 call came at, at 1030. Nonetheless, the back door was barricaded. The siege went on for several hours until about 3 o'clock in the afternoon. By that time, the police had finally cleared the building, found the dead body that they believed was the gunman with a bag of ammunition wrapped around his neck. That resolved the whole thing. But again, authorities are still trying to identify all the victims, the gunman, and try to sort out this horrific scene here on this street very close to downtown Binghamton. NBC's Rachel? Ron Allen on the scene in Binghamton, live with us tonight. Thank you so much, Ron. Good luck to you. Thanks. Matthew T. Ryan is the mayor of Binghamton, and Joseph Sikuski is the police chief. Mayor Ryan and Chief Sikuski, thank you for joining us on this most difficult day. You're welcome. Thank you, Rachel. Um, Mr. Mayor, let me ask you first if there's any indication of who this gunman was, what might have been a possible motive uh, for this incident. Well, we really don't know. We, know, we do know that he was uh, apparently had lost a job recently and that he was somewhat distraught. He couldn't... Uh, speak English very well and uh, had been telling some of his family and stuff that people were disrespecting him and he didn't seem too uh, happy about his life. Um, uh, Ch uh, Chief Zakuski, um, in terms of the local response, obviously the siege went on for several hours. You were alerted to the siege in part because of that incredibly brave receptionist who played dead and then called while wounded. How are you assessing the overall response of your force, of your police force there, and of authorities generally within Binghamton? Did you have the resources that you needed? Did you do the job that you wanted to do? Absolutely. The, the response was incredible. Uh, our response time was uh, less than two minutes. Uh, all the shooting that ended prior to any police uh, arriving on the scene, uh, there was an extremely beautiful response from the New York State Police, from the Broome County Sheriff's Department, uh, without us even soliciting any uh, help from them. Uh, you know, they scan, the police agencies scan each other, they heard the call go out, and I had the uh, disposal of the entire Broome County Sheriff's Department and uh, the, all the resources of New York State Police within a matter of minutes uh, upon my own arrival there. And shortly thereafter, uh, ATF, INS, FBI, uh, the Vestal and uh, Police Department showed up. So we had everything we needed. Uh, we have a very well-trained, uh, I believe one of the best uh, SWAT teams in, in the uh, state, but we also asked for assistance from the Sheriff's Department SWAT team, and there's a Metro team for the smaller agencies. So we had everything we need to, to handle the situation. 
Chief, let me ask you, given the, what, what we know about how the siege unfolded with the gunmen blockading the back door of the facility with a vehicle, it seems like this may have been a, a well-planned out, uh, premeditated, thought out in advance um, event. Do you have evidence? Have you seen signs yet that this is something that might have been worked out in advance to a lot of detail, that he might have been planning this for some time? We have not found any evidence of that, but I will agree with you. Obviously, at least this morning, he knew exactly what he was going to do. Placed the vehicle against the back, the back door of the, uh, the Civic Association so nobody could escape. So he obviously, uh, at least this morning, knew and went to that place with every intention of doing what, what he did. Mr. Mayor, um, do you have any updates for us on the condition of the four wounded victims um, or on any others that we might not know about at this point? Now, there is only four other people. They are, uh, have been listed in critical condition, um, so we're very worried about them and praying for them tonight. But we've uh, started to reach out to um, all the families of the victims. Uh, they, by somewhat of a process of elimination, are starting to realize who, who died because there's still a lot of identification procedures that have to go forward. But I think most of the families now know that uh, their loved ones have not come home. Uh, have come to our Red Cross uh, Center Catholic Charities and we're starting to uh, make sure they have uh, counselors and as we go forward the whole community is pouring forth to help them. This is a, a community that really helps uh, in these kinds of tragedies um, in, in, in tough times. We had a, two historic floods in 2006. Everybody came together. Uh, we've only had one homicide all last year. This is a very uh, not normal for our, obviously for our community. And, uh, but they will, this community will come together, we'll be strong, we're going to plan a vigil tomorrow for the whole community, and then we'll um, start the healing process, which is obviously going to take some, some time. Can you describe to our viewers what sort of facility this was? Um, we know that there was, it was a place where immigrants came to learn English to prepare for citizenship exams. What other services, what kind of facility was this? This is a great facility. It, it really did help. Uh, we have a great immigrate, immigrant population, and they do contribute so much to our community, and they're so proud to become citizens. I've gone to many of their, um, when they do become citizens, the ceremony. And uh, it's, uh, they celebrate the cultures, the many different cultures. We have a small city of um, you know, 45,000, but we have 32 languages spoken in our public high school. So uh, it's a real strong part of our population and they contribute so much, they celebrate. Uh, we have an ethnic festival every uh, year in our Broome County Veterans Memorial Arena. So this is, they're a real important part of our, of our fabric of our city, and uh, we will all um, miss those people who died, obviously, and, and celebrate their contributions to our community. Binghamton Mayor Matthew Ryan, Police Chief Joseph Sikeski, obviously part of the response of you as leaders in your community is making this united front effort to talk to the media, to let people know what's going on. Thank you for your time tonight. Our thoughts are with your community. Thank, Thank you, you very much, Rachel. All right.